All right, guys, new intro here for the Bear Pack. We already crushed a 7K subscriber goal, so we are going to update that board here for you guys. Look at Joe Burrow looking at all these nice, tasty giveaways. We have the 8K sub jersey giveaway. We have the 9K sub sports memorabilia giveaway. 10K subs, the big one, $1,000 giveaway, and the 12K subs. We're going to send a couple people to a game of their choice. Guys, we are very excited for the football season, but no more talking. Let's get right into this video, Trey. Well, guys, we are here after an exciting week one of football. It was very high anticipation. There was a lot of great players. There was a lot of bad players. There were a lot of blowouts. There was a lot of close games. And if you guys were like me, you were probably in some leagues where you guys blew out your opponent and then you got blew out or you won or lost a close game. So even after one week, we all know we need to make adjustments to our rosters, whether or not that's picking someone off the waiver wire or that's acquiring them from a trade. Always tinker with your roster. That's how you make it to the championship. And that's what we're going to be going over today. We're going to be each giving out one player that we're going to have a stock up on, one player that we're going to be trying to buy or pick up on the waivers, and one player that we think is a stock down, one player that we're trying to get off our roster ASAP or just stay away from if people are flying them out as trade bait. And I'm going to start us off here, and I'm going to say Romeo Dobbs. He's going to be my stock up. I really love buying Dobbs right now, even after his awesome week one, because Dobbs, he caught four passes for only 26 yards, but two of those catches were for touchdowns versus the Bears, including one big play that I know for a fact is going to be on the You Got Mossed. And you should be able to get Dobbs still relatively cheap, as your league mates probably are wanting to sell him before Christian Watson gets back from his injury. But I think even whenever Watson does come back, that Dobbs should be Jordan Love's main target. All we heard from Aaron Rodgers last season is Dobbs is special and kind of reminded him of Devontae Adams. And he showed that last season. He was a very consistent player catching a ton of touchdowns last season. And starting week one off with two touchdowns is a very good sign. So if I were you, I'd be rushing out to go buy Dobbs because he's going to be a consistent flex play for you guys this year. And you should be able to get him relatively cheapish too. Seth, who is going to be your stock up guy after week one? Yeah, I'm going to go a little uh, different route with mine. And I'm going to go to a guy who you can definitely get on this waiver wire. And this is a guy that I have, uh, I heard a lot about in the off season. I heard a lot of rumblings. I heard the name Puka Naku. I was like, I was like, who is this guy? I, did, I wasn't going to buy it at first, but after week one, guys, I'm going to buy the hype because there's an opening as the number one receiver on the Rams right now with uh, the uncertainty of Cooper Cup's quad. You know, I'm, I'm going to buy high on Puka Nakua. You're going to be able to get him at the waiver wire. I know you guys have some people on your bench that really underperformed. This is a guy you should replace them with. He outpaced Van Jefferson by 10 targets and outpaced Tutu Atwell by seven targets. This guy got 15 targets in his game Sunday. He already has – Matthew Stafford in his pocket. Stafford loves throwing to him. He could be a PPR monster for you. And he's a big play receiver. In college, he averaged 16.3 uh, yards per reception. So he does he does average quite a bit. He's a big play receiver. And I just like his upside as a PPR receiver, especially the Rams showing that they're going to throw it even if they don't have Cooper Cup. So I do think Puka Nakua could be a nice pickup for you at the waiver wire as a nice little stash just to make sure he's going to take off. But I do see him him uh, being Matthew Stafford's favorite target. And he's got a great name. He does have a great name. That great is true. He does have a great name. I love that name. And if there's one thing that we do know about Matthew Stafford is once he realizes that he can fixate on a wide receiver, that's exactly what he's going to do. He did it to Calvin Johnson. He did it to Cooper Cup. This season, it may be Puka Nakua, so I love that pick for Seth. Bear, I'm excited to see who your stock up guy is going to be. I know it's not going to be anybody on the Giants roster because they got blown out by your Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be a trade guy here. You have to go get Tyreek Hill. This is a guy you have to put a couple people together and try to trade for him after week one. It's not going to be cheap, but this is a guy you have to go get. Speed kills, guys, and somehow Tyreek Hill looks faster this year than last year. I know it's week one, but against the Chargers defense, he put up 215 yards, 11 catches, two touchdowns. He promised 2,000 yards this season. He's already 10% there in week one. He is a difference maker. He will win you fantasy leagues. He won't get you to the playoffs. He won't get you to the champ game. He's going to win you leagues. The package that I would send over for Tyreek Hill, it would probably have to be wide receiver running back or wide receiver and a good quarterback like a Justin Fields maybe, who didn't have a very good week, but I still think he's going to be very good. That's how high I am on Hill. Ty or Justin Fields was like my third best quarterback. I would trade him for Tyreek Hill Fields and like a Terry McLaurin or a Jalen Waddle, who's the other half of that offense for the Dolphins. That should do the trick. It's going to be hard to trade for him, but I think you got to put everything in to try to get him. Tyreek Hill is my guy to go get this week, Trey. 
I love that because we saw Tua. He was dropping it in an absolute bucket to him. It reminded me of Russell Wilson back in the glory days. I love that pick for Tyreek Hill. And people might be like, oh, buy him. His, he's already wide receiver one, two, or three. Well, it, he's going to score you wide receiver one, two, or three points every single week. So I would be out buying him if I could. So now we're going to be flipping it over. We talked about the positive. Oh, this is so good, so good. Let's go over to the bad because these three players or three people that we're going to be talking about are things we're going to be staying away from. It's going to be our stock downs. I'm going to start us off here with the entire Titans offense, guys. You guys see those three bullet points, and they are, are all truths because the Titans offense just looked very, very bad against the Saints last week. Yes, I know the Saints defense is one of the better ones in the NFL, but at the end of the day, you still have to look like a competent NFL offense. And the Titans, they looked anything but like that on Sunday because Tannehill, he had a 47 completion percentage, only throwing for 198 yards. King Henry, he only played 48% of the snaps in a close game that you would figure they're going to run the piss out of the ball. They didn't do that, and, they, and he only played 48%, less than 50%. That's no bueno, especially in week one whenever you think they're just going to run him into the ground. And then the wide receivers, no separation. DeAndre Hopkins and Traylon Burke, they only combined for 83 yards on nine catches. Everybody in the offense just looked brutal, and I don't think it's going to get better before it gets worse, to be honest with you. And I'd be dropping Ryan Tannehill if I had him as my backup. I'd be trading King Henry away if I could. And I'd be fading both of these wide receivers until I see it because I have to believe it from them. So I will fade the entire Titans offense until I see it. King Henry is the only one that I would maybe roster. But DeAndre Hopkins, he looked all right. But Traylon Burke, he did not look good. Only two catches. So Titans offense, <laughs> Seth, what are you going to be going with? Yeah, guys, after uh, watching uh, Jesse's boys put it to the uh, Giants offense, I am very, 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 very low, even lower than I probably was on this Giants offense. I mean, I get they have Saquon Barkley, but I'm, I'm – not liking him after seeing what the O-line did against the Cowboys. That O-line gave Daniel Jones no time to even think about what he was doing. On top of that, they have no receivers. They These receivers cannot get open. They were led by Darren Waller, who's a tight end. He led them in receptions, and he only had three receptions. They just did not get open. They struggled. The offensive line struggled. They couldn't get a run game going. They couldn't get a pass game going. You know, I actually have Daniel Jones on my fantasy team, so I was really holding out hope that maybe last season wasn't just kind of one of those seasons, but it's looking like Daniel Jones got lucky last season and he had some good games. He's already back to turning it over as he threw two interceptions last night and lost two fumbles. He turned the ball over four times, and I think I saw he had a total of, what, like eight turnovers last year is all. So he's back to his old ways. Brian DeBall did not have this team clicking on all cylinders. Just go ahead and fade the whole Giants offense. If that's Saquon Barkley, I, I would try trading Saquon and seeing what you could get out of him. Maybe, like Bear said, you could package somebody like Saquon and get Tyree Kill from somebody. I don't know. It might be something to look at, but maybe throw him in a package with a receiver and go get Tyree Kill. Yeah, if there's anything that we learned in week one is that you have to have a great offensive line to produce. And kind of like what I was saying about the Titans, that kind of goes with the Giants offense. I don't see it getting better before it gets worse. Now, Bear, who is your going to be guy they're going to be selling? Who's going to be your stock down? Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what Seth said. Uh, my guy I'm selling is Dak Prescott. The Dallas Cowboys in week one did not need Prescott on the field. He had a 72 quarterback rating, completed 54% of his passes, going for 143 yards and no scores. All of it passes also, wide open targets. The Cowboys scored 40 points without their quarterback because they have the best defense in the league, which is only debatable with the 49ers. Those are obviously the one and two best defenses in the league. The Cowboys are going to run the ball this year, and I was already low on Dak Prescott, even though people seem to like him, uh, but I don't think they need him. The Cowboys last week proved that they don't need him, and honestly, when Dak Prescott has the ball in his hands, he's a liability. Having the turnover problems, he makes wrong decisions all the time. This year, they're going to run, run, run with Pollard. The defense is going to keep teams out of the end zone. I would sell Dak Prescott here. You can maybe get a flex option for him, but I don't think he's going to put up a lot of numbers this year. That will be my sell guy, Trey. And I would usually push back on that because I'd be like, Cowboys offense, you know, they're elite. They pass the ball a ton. But like you said, they run heavy now. And Mike McCarthy said it in the offseason. He didn't want Kellen Moore to be the OC because Kellen Moore fell in love with the pass, fell in love with the pass, and he was going to get back to the run. And I didn't believe it, but I saw it in week one. They were running the ball a ton. So I love selling Dak Prescott there. And guys, also, thank you. 
for tuning into our live if you did Sunday. We're going to be going live every Sunday, giving out fantasy football advice, start sits, and even our best bets as well. We're going to be going live at 11 a.m. until right around kickoff. So tune in for that. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. Stock up, stock down. We'll see you guys next week. Just want to let everyone know that while we do give out free picks, plays, and predictions on our YouTube channel, we also have a website for you to check out. On our website, bearsprofitplays.com, you can subscribe to the website absolutely free with an email and gain access to our written articles about upcoming sporting events. If you're really looking to make some cash, we have an option to become a member of our website. If you become a member, you will gain access to our locks of the week, which are written articles that go in-depth as to why we are picking that particular outcome. As of now, our member plays have been red hot, hitting over 60% of our plays. If you don't want to become a member, it's no sweat. We are here to try and make you guys some money. That's our main goal. So come on over to bearsprofitplays.com and subscribe for free. Check us out, follow our free picks, and see for yourself that our member plays are a great investment for you. Thanks for watching.